In an earlier video, we have discussed how to assign the positive and negative terminals for the battery and also the positive and negative electrodes for the electrolytic cell. So we will try to apply the concepts to two examples in this video for molten sodium chloride and for molten lead bromide. So first of all, sodium chloride, molten. As usual, we will tackle the battery first. This shorter end is the negative terminal. The longer end is a positive terminal. The electrons come out from the negative terminal and goes to this electrode. So this electrode will be the negative electrode. The other electrode will be the positive electrode. The electrolyte consists of molten sodium chloride. So we have sodium ions and chloride ions. Sodium ions being positively charged will be attracted to the electrode that is negatively charged. This electrode that attracts cations, we can call it the cathode. So sodium ion, when it reaches the cathode, it will be discharged. It will lose its charge. To do that, it will need to gain one electron to form the sodium element. Again, do realize that gaining of electrons is reduction and so it fits into the concept that reduction always takes place at the cathode. On the other electrode, the anode, the electrode that attracts anions, chlorides will be discharged and here we have to be careful. The stable element under this condition is not a chlorine atom, but the diatomic chlorine gas. So we will need to discharge two chloride ions. For the chloride ions to be discharged, it will have to lose, it will have to lose two electrons. So losing electrons, we will put it on the other side to show that it lost two electrons. And so this is the equation for the anode. Losing electrons is oxidation. So these two are what we also call half equations. So when you're required to write half equations for the cathode, you'll be writing the top one. If you're writing half equations for the anode, you'll be writing the second reaction. If we do need to combine the equation, maybe for purposes of calculating the ratio of sodium form to chlorine gas form. When we need to combine the half equations, what is important is we need to make sure that the electrons are of the same number. So we may need to multiply one or the other. In this case, I will try to make these electrons to be two because we have two electrons here. So before we combine equations, Okay, I'll multiply it throughout by 2 for the top equation. And then I will merge them. We start off with sodium chloride, 2, 2. Okay, the electrons will cancel out, which is why we make them the same number in the first place. And then on the product side, we have 2 Na and 1 Cl2. So this is the overall equation if you do require or if you are required to come up with one. In other words, 2 moles of sodium chloride will give 2 moles of sodium and 1 mole of chlorine gas. Moving on to molten lead bromide. The same setup, we will assign our negative and positive terminals quickly now. Shorter end, negative, positive. This electrode connected to the negative terminal is negative electrode and positive electrode. The ions involved will be lead, 2 plus, and 
bromide ions. Okay, the lead 2 plus will be attracted to the negative terminal. This is our cathode. We write the half equations for the cathode first. Lead 2 plus will require 2 moles of electrons to totally discharge. forming lead element. Again, reduction takes place at the cathode. On the other side, on the anode, we have our bromide ions. Again, like chlorine, it forms a diatomic element, Br2. To do that, it will have to lose two moles of electrons. So these are the half equations for the cathode and anode. If you do require the overall equation, the same thing, we check the electrons to make sure they are the same. In this case, we have two and two, so there's no need to make any adjustments to multiply any factor throughout. We can merge them directly. So we have Pb Br2. Electrons cancel out. We will have one more of lead with every one more of bromine element form or bromine gas form. So this is the discussion on molten ionic compounds. Right. In later video, we will talk about what happens when we have ionic compounds dissolve in water in aqueous state. And that will require the, the thinking process of selective discharge.